I love Animaniacs. Why wouldn't I? I love the humor, the writing, the music freaking slaps. But today, I want to talk about its variety of sketches and characters. From two lab mice bent on world domination, to a cranky sarcastic old squirrel, to a pigeon mafia, to a singing stray cat and a brain dead dog searching for a decent home to stay in, the list goes on. Now, with all the characters the show I had to work with, what if I were to tell you, around the end of the first season, the writers decided to take all the characters they had and mix up their scenarios and roles. They called this little experiment of theirs, Animaniac Stew. How will all this work out? Let's find out. In the first segment, The Garden of Mindy, the brain is up to his whole taking over the world stick yet again by trying to create some stink bomb with lawn crap. But this time he's paired up with Mindy instead of Pinky. Mindy always had this childlike curiosity about everything, like any kid which was the main cause for Buttons to put himself through hell just to save her. But here it's used to mess up the brain's plan as Minnie tries to help the brain with said plan. It's actually quite fun to see. Mindy, it's time for us to conquer the world. Why? By right of superior intelligence, I am best suited to guide the destiny of this planet. Why? My empirical powers give me the mandate. Why? Because it's something I want to do. Okay, let so yeah, like always, the brain's plan backfires in the end. Not a bad segment to start the episode overall, but I do wonder who Pinky was paired up with, though. Oh, Rita the cat? That's not- Wait. Rita? The cat? Oh, shit. What do you want to do tonight, Rita? I don't know. Eat you for supper. So far, this is my favorite episode. Well, that didn't end very well. Let's move on to the next segment, No Place Like Homeless. This one follows Run, this time being paired up with Pesto the Good Feathers, as they search for a home to stay in, like any reader in Run's segment. The two eventually come across an old lady's house, which, by the way, is a lot more grounded and simple compared to other Rita and Run segments. When other segments would have them go to Egypt or in a Frankenstein parody, further showing that the shorts in this episode are much more character driven. If this was just a basic Rita and Run short with no pesto to speak of, I really don't think it would have worked as well. Oh, speaking of characters, can I just say I absolutely love the way these two play off each other here? It really reminded me of Ren and Stimpy, you know, with one being dumb and one being angry all the time. And I just love it, man. I just thought us dogs definitely should have a roof over our heads. Definitely a roof for dogs. What did you say? That us dogs should have a home. Are you calling me a dog? Are you saying that I'm ugly? That you don't want your friends to see me? That because my face doesn't shine like a crown of a king, I must be some kind of a beast? Runt even points out that Pesto has to sing, something Rita would do every segment. It's just great, man. But yeah, like I said, the scenario really isn't anything out of the ordinary. But it still does work for what they were trying to do. I did like seeing Pesto beat the shit out of this parrot, though. But yeah, overall, this is easily one of my favorite segments in the episode, simply because of Pesto and Runt themselves. And we still only have a few more segments to go. Right next up we have, what, Katie Kaboom? Isn't she a solo act though? Who is she paired up with? Mom, Dad, meet CB. CB, these are my parents. Alright, makes sense. Apparently they wanted to involve the characters that usually went solo in their segments in this episode. It's actually really neat. Here, Chicken Boo is acting like Katie's new boyfriend, as her parents try to tell her it's obviously a chicken in a costume. But like any Chicken Boo segment, she's clearly blind to that. Honestly, this segment's pretty alright. If you've seen any Katie Kaboom or Chicken Boo segment, I'm sure you'll know how this plays out. Katie will get all mad and turn into a monster and Chicken Boo will be exposed. Overall, not a bad segment, but not much else for me to say. After a brief moment of Dot acting like Slappy Squirrel, which should hint at what's coming up next, by the way. We're introduced to our last short, Baghdad Cafe. A segment focusing on Yakko, Wacko, and Slappy Squirrel placing Dot Warner. This is gonna be good. So anyway, the short balls are three busting into Saddam Hussein's place thinking it's a cafe, and pissing this guy off as always. The writing from the Warners is still great, but it's definitely Slappy who steals the show here. I just love how she's basically reading off the script and making fun of it. She leaps into the handsome god's arms. Give me a boost, will ya? I'm old. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Hello, nurse. I don't 
don't get it. What does that mean? There's even a fun little gag with Flavio, one of the hip hop is replacing Skippy Squirrel. With Slappy acting confused about that too, it's pretty neat. Slappy eventually gets fed up with the script and puts some dynamite down to Dobbs' pants, which of course blows him away, and yeah, that's the end of the segment. Overall, this is easily my favorite of the segments. It was a fun Warner segment with the always brilliant Slappy Squirrel put in the mix. If it wasn't obvious enough, Slappy's my favorite character and I hope to make a video on her someday. And other than a Wheel of Morality thing, that's, that's pretty much the end of the episode. And it's definitely one of my favorites in the whole series too. It shows that these characters can not only work in any scenario, but just with any one too. It really made me wish they had a follow up to this. I can see so many more interaction ideas, like Pesto and the Brain, Slappy Squirrel and Minerva Mink, Skippy and Runt, the list goes on. Hell, if the reboot managed to get most of the characters back, they should do the follow up there. Just anything to see a great idea like this done again. So yeah, anyway, uh, that was a good episode, but what will I talk about next time? Alright, oh, Rugrats is getting rebooted. It's coming out at the end of the month? Alright, I guess I'll talk about that next time. Okay, bye.